Over the years, I've interviewed for well over 30 mechanical engineering positions at many companies, both big and small, across the United States and China. The job interview process will vary from company to company, but for the most part, they follow a general format, and I'm going to show you exactly what these interviews are like in this video. The first round is usually with HR, the second round is usually with the engineering manager or your future potential boss, and the third round is with the director or VP of engineering. Now it's almost time for your first round of interviews and you're kind of stressed out even though it's with HR because you know how hard it is to land an interview in the first place and don't want to mess up. Okay, now time to join a phone interview via WebEx. Hi Victor, I'm Evelyn. Hope you're doing well and thank you for your interest in this mechanical engineer position that we're hiring for in multiple locations across the US here at Orange. First, I'll briefly introduce and walk through the responsibilities of this role. I'll have you introduce yourself and we'll wrap things up by having you answer several basic questions and completing a brief technical quiz. What the F? A technical quiz in the first round? You gotta be kidding me. Okay, yeah, that sounds great. This is a very exciting entry to low mid-level position where you'll have the opportunity to impact the world and take full ownership of the mechanical design of our next generation mobile phones, tablets, watches, and laptops from conceptualization all the way to mass production, leveraging your creativity, leadership, and technical expertise. You will be required to work closely with manufacturing, electrical, optical engineers, and suppliers, as well as collaborate with marketing, quality, and regulatory affairs in a dynamic, cross-functional, team-oriented environment. Okay, now please tell me a little about yourself. Well, thanks for sharing more about this job opportunity, Evelyn. I'm Victor Lee, and I'm currently a mechanical engineer with approximately four years of relevant industry experience working in the consumer and commercial electronics industries. After acquiring my bachelor's and master's degree in mechanical engineering, I started my first full-time job as a mechanical engineer at a mid-sized private company called Sloan in 2018. There I led the mechanical design and electronics packaging of their automatic infrared sensing IoT hand dryers and various flush file product lines. Then in 2022, I wanted to try something a little different, so I joined Foxconn as a product and process development engineer. Day to day, we work jointly with the Apple engineering team on the mechanical design and manufacturing process of next generation iPhones. Okay, now as I mentioned, this role is based in four different locations across the US, and each location is responsible for a different product line. So the team in Austin, Texas works on the ePad tablet, the team in Boston, Massachusetts works on the eWatch, the team in Seattle, Washington works on the ePhone, and the team in Hooker, Oklahoma works on the eCloud laptop. Do you have any preferences in terms of location and product line? Wait, is it just me or did she seriously just say Hooker? Okay, Victor, focus. Both Oklahoma and Texas are just too suburban for me. Living in Seattle and Boston both seem pretty cool, but I've never been to Seattle, so I'll just say ePhone. It's very impressive to see so many different teams come together to create so many wonderful products. Based on my previous experience, skill set, and personal interests, the ePhone is my top choice. Okay, I've made a note here. If you do end up moving on to the next round of interviews, please keep in mind that it will be with the ePhone engineering manager. Now before we move on to the technical quiz, I would like to get a better sense of your expected salary. It could be a range or a ballpark number. While the compensation is important to me, I first wanted to better understand what it's like to work at your organization, including who I'll be working with, what I'll be doing, the training and career advancement opportunities, the benefits, you know, all of that jazz. I'm excited to learn about these things throughout the interview process, and towards the end, I'm sure I'll be able to provide a more accurate number for my expected salary. What I can share with you now is my current base salary, which is $150,000. Okay, so you said 150k, correct? Okay, so I'll just say 150 to 170k. Does that sound reasonable? Yes, for now that's fine, but like I said before, I would like to understand the big picture first before providing actual numbers. I'm sure if we're right for each other, the numbers will work out. Okay, so those were all the questions I had for you. Now, I'll ask you five technical questions that we use to assess candidates. If you're able to answer four out of five questions correctly, we will move you on to the next round of interviews. So the first question is, which material conducts heat the best? Aluminum, steel, copper, or brass? Let me think about that for a second. Is she for real? She has to do better than that to fool me. Unlike her, I actually took heat transfer and aced it. To my recollection, copper is commonly used in car radiators and integrated heat spreaders 
and has a very high thermal conductivity of around 400 watt per meter Kelvin. So copper is my final answer. Okay, next question. Assuming the load is applied at the end of a rectangular cross-section cantilever beam, what material has the greatest impact on the deflection of the beam? The length L, the height H, or the force P? Shoot, I didn't do so well on mechanics and materials. Come on, Victor, think. So I remember the deflection of cantilever beam depends on the force, elastic modulus, Moment of inertia and the distance between the applied force and the fixed point. But what was the formula? Alright, let me quickly Google it. Oh right, that's what it was. FL cubed over 3EI. So the beam deflection is proportional to the length cubed, so it must be length. But hold on. The moment of inertia of a rectangle for this case is equal to the width times height cubed over 12. So the deflection is also inversely proportional to the height cubed. Yeah, that should be right. I believe the correct answer is both the length L and the height H. Okay, next question. Does the inner diameter D1 of a donut decrease or increase after it's baked in an oven and cooled at room temperature? Well, a donut is similar to the shape of a bearing, which is used in interference fits. This question is a piece of cake. So the inner diameter D1 would increase while it's baked and then decrease as it's cooled to room temperature. Okay, good. Question 4. Which material property represents failure? Elastic modulus, yield strength, or ultimate strength? That would be ultimate strength. Okay, now for the final question. If you wanted to decrease the moment of inertia of a rectangular cross-section with height B and width C, what could you do? Okay, okay, this is so easy. So you could either decrease the height or the width or even both. Okay, good job. So you answered all five questions correctly and you'll be moving on to the next stage of interviews. I'll be reaching out to you via email early next week to set up a WebEx conference video call with the engineering manager. With that being said, do you have any questions for me? Yes, I was actually wondering how many total rounds of interviews there are for this role. So how it works is there's typically three rounds of interviews for entry-level engineering positions here at Orange. First it's with HR, then it's with the manager, and finally it's with the VP of engineering. All right, if you don't have any other questions, thank you for your time and best of luck in your job hunt. Thanks, you too. Wait, did I just say you too? Oh my god, hopefully she didn't hear that. One week later. Hello, my name is Patrick. I'm the engineering manager here at Orange in charge of the ePhone team, and I've been here for just under four years. We're looking to fill two to three mechanical engineering roles at our Seattle facility to support the growing demand for our ePhone product families. Now tell me about yourself. Hello Patrick, good afternoon, I'm Victor Lee. I graduated from Boston University in 2016 with a BS degree in mechanical engineering. Afterwards, I headed to Tsinghua University in Beijing, China and graduated in 2018 with an MS degree in mechanical engineering. After finishing school, I joined a company called Sloan and worked there for about three years as a mechanical engineer too. I led the mechanical design and electronics packaging of their $10 million automatic infrared sensing IoT hand dryer and flushometer product lines from product concept to product launch. I wanted to see what it's like to work in the consumer electronics industry, so in 2021 I joined Foxconn as a product and process development engineer in Silicon Valley. There, I was responsible for the design for manufacturability of next generation iPhones. And day to day, we work jointly with Apple product design and manufacturer design engineers to understand their functional, cosmetic, dimensional, and reliability requirements to ensure their needs are met in production. Okay, so tell me a little bit more about Sloan. What type of components did you design for their products? So the majority of parts that I designed at Sloan were fabricated using plastic injection molding, CNC machining, casting, forging, vacuum forming, as well as 3D printing for things like PCB housings, the external hand dryer structure, and test fixtures. What type of materials did you use for plastic injection molding? Off the top of my head, I designed PCB housings and sensor windows using polycarbonate like Lexin for its toughness and optical transparency, as well as Palm or Delrin for applications requiring higher wear resistance and low friction. Alright, do you have any experience designing sheet metal parts, particularly with magnesium? What? That's such a specific question. I really don't remember working with sheet metal except during my internship. 
Yeah, I guess I'll say that it's better than nothing. I do also know magnesium alloy exhibits a high strength to weight ratio. Yes, as a matter of fact, during my internship, I had the opportunity to design steel and aluminum sheet metal parts for a power electronics enclosure on board a government vehicle. Some things I learned along the way is that the bend line should be perpendicular to the grain direction, as well as incorporating things like bend reliefs and maintaining appropriate center to center hole distances, hole diameters, and bend radii. As for magnesium, I haven't really worked with it, but I know that it exhibits a high strength to weight ratio compared to steel and aluminum, and is commonly used in weight saving applications such as automobile door panels. I'm sure many of the existing sheet metal design principles that I learned can be fine tuned and can be applied to magnesium alloy. Okay, I asked this question because we use magnesium in the majority of our products here, and in this role, you need to be a subject matter expert in this area. All right, I see you've worked on a decent number of projects. Can you tell me a little bit about the product development process and what it entails? Oh man, I didn't really prepare for this question. I'll just have to wing it. Sure, a product generally starts out as a concept chosen from a list of hundreds of ideas generated during the ideation phase. It then moves on to the high level and detailed design phase. Once the overall design is nailed down, a proof of concept or prototype is created using a combination of manufacturing processes like 3D printing, machining, injection molding, and sheet metal fabrication. Then the first build containing parts fabricated using mass production processes will undergo engineering validation testing and function as intended but may not be cosmetically perfect. Tests performed in this stage include integration, compliance, and reliability testing. The next stage is then design validation testing where all units meet both functional and cosmetic requirements and are essentially production ready. Quantities are usually in the hundreds and yields are greater than 90%. Next is the production validation testing stage where manufacturing and assembly processes are fine tuned and optimized. Quantities generally are in the thousands and the yields sit above 98%. In this stage, the units should be able to be shipped to customers. Finally, we move into the final stage of mass production, which means high volume continuous production. And engineering teams are usually hands off at this point. Okay, now you say you have plastic injection molding experience. Could you explain the difference and the relationship between draft angles and shutoff angles? Hmm, shutoff angle, that sounds familiar. Come on, Victor, think. Oh yeah, that's right. How could I possibly forget? I once had an hour-long argument with a Chinese vendor over shutoff angles. Sure, that's a very good question. Um, a draft angle usually exists for purposes of part release, while a shutoff angle is used to prevent the two halves of the mold from crashing into another if there's any misalignment. A rule of thumb for draft angles is 0.5 to 2 degrees on all vertical walls depending on both the feature depth and minimum wall thickness. So a larger feature depth requires a larger draft angle while a larger wall thickness requires a smaller draft angle. On the other hand, the shutoff angle is a bit different and requires a larger angle. The minimum is usually 3 degrees if I remember correctly. You said 3 degrees? Alright, so those were all the questions I had for you today. Any questions you would like to ask me? Yes, I actually had one question. Let's assume Orange were to give me an offer and I was to accept it. A year from now, what will I have done specifically that you would consider this hire a success? Well, that's a good question. So within the first year, my expectations for this mechanical engineer is to develop a solid understanding for our current iPhone product lines and the similarities and differences between them from both a design and manufacturing process standpoint. Really understand why we do things in such a specific way. This will ultimately allow you to come up with better ideas and to lead some of our future projects. Now, we only have two minutes left. If you don't have any other questions, let's end it here. You should expect to hear back from Evelyn within a week if you do end up making it to the final stage of interviews, which will be with my manager. He's the vice president of engineering. All right, thanks for your time. Thanks. Have a good one. Take care. Seriously, did I just say have a good one in an interview? I guess that's all right. Is it though? Ugh, forget it. One week later. Hello, my name is Steve. I'm going to keep this short today. A little bit about myself. I'm the vice president of engineering and I oversee all engineering activities to ensure that current and future needs at Orange are met.
During my time here, I revitalized Orange's product pipeline, and my job is to drive greater innovation, top line growth, and overall profitability of the company. Under my leadership, Orange achieved a three year CAGR of 29% and a perfect net promoter score. We have a great company culture and we're growing at a breakneck pace. Now, I see you've acquired a master's degree overseas in China. What made you want to study there? Well, that's a great question. So Tsinghua University is a world-class institution, especially for STEM majors, and offer me a full ride. Those two factors alone were enough to make me want to go. Secondarily, I wanted to be challenged and experience a new culture, education system, and fast-paced environment in a country with over 1.4 billion people, as well as the home my Chinese, which I think is one of the most, if not the most useful languages to learn as an engineer, as many US corporations, including Orange, works with a handful of Chinese suppliers and contract manufacturers. Well, those are very legitimate reasons to study in China, and I'm sure your Chinese will be an asset if you end up working at Orange. Before I drop off, are there any questions you have for me? I was wondering what are some of Orange's long-term goals and how this mechanical engineering role would help accomplish those goals. Two of Orange's long-term goals is to increase sales and to increase brand awareness and recognition. Now, what metrics we use to measure these things, I'll keep to myself. Now, to answer your question, this role is critical in helping us achieve these goals. Everything starts with the product, not marketing. Without the product, you have no brand awareness, you have no brand recognition. Product has to be innovative, user-friendly, reliable. It has to deliver what the customer wants and more. In this role, you will have a say in how our next generation e-phones look, behave, and function, and how our customers ultimately perceive our product and brand is in your hands. With that being said, you'll hear back from us by next week with a decision. Thank you for your time, Steve. Enjoy the rest of your day. That wasn't bad at all. I wish every interviewer was like, Steve, you the man, Victor, you the man. Although I guess I shouldn't get my hopes up and should continue applying for other opportunities in case they decide to ghost me like the last company. You should never put your eggs in one basket.